So what happens when the clinical signs don't go away and the urine culture is still positive? That's the one of the more common scenarios. The reinfection versus a relapsing situation have to be considered, and we'll, we will detail that in quite a bit uh, more here as the session goes on. What happens if the clinical signs don't go away? The urine culture was positive in the beginning, but the repeat urine culture uh, was negative. Uh, that means that you got rid of the infection, but the signs are still there, so there might be something else going on underlying uh, wrongness in the, in the uh, urinary tract anatomy, stones, seral stones, cancer, perhaps granulomas. What happens if the clinical signs don't go away? The, the initial culture was, was not positive. The repeat culture is still negative. Uh, it's probably not a urinary tract infection. Maybe it's sterile inflammation. Could they still be infected but hidden? That's always a possibility, but really hard to prove. If the clinical signs go away and the culture is still positive, we usually refer to that as an occult urinary tract infection or subclinical, and we will deal with that at the end of this session today. When we have these recurrent positive uh, bacterial cultures, the question is, could it be the bug? something particularly unusual about the bug. Could it be the animal, something anatomically or metabolically wrong with it? Could it be the owner or the veterinarian that are not either giving the medication or the veterinarian perhaps not choosing the best antibacterials for that particular situation? It could be the bug. It's not usually the bug in primary care practice. Uh, it could be highly resistant organisms. It could be that that particular organism has some unusual virulence factors that allows it to persist and stick around. It could be that the bugs are actually not accessible and they are sequestered somewhere within the urinary tract that the antibiotics cannot get to. In referral practices, about 20% of our cases might have a much higher resistance pattern than, uh, than would otherwise be expected. In primary care practice, hopefully the organisms that you'll be dealing with will not have multiple drug resistance patterns. So when we have another positive culture, either in the presence or in the absence of clinical signs, that does define a recurrent urinary tract infection. And we have to decide, is it a reinfection, a brand new bug, or is it a relapse when the bugs have not been completely cleared from the urinary tract? In order to make this distinction between reinfection and relapse, you need a lot of culture results. You need to have culture results before antibiotics have been started, while the antibiotics are being given, and, and a number of days to even weeks and months after the antibiotics have been stopped. We don't always have that. We don't oftentimes have that kind of information to make a definitive call. A reinfection with or without clinical signs means that the antibiotics sterilize the urine, usually for weeks to months, and then a new bacterial organism was isolated. The presumption is that you actually sterilized not only the urine, but the tissue, and a new bug ascended and took, uh, took its place. These bugs they send, as we had discussed in the first session, usually from fecal flora, sometimes from the distal urethra, sometimes from organisms around that area. This is a completely new organism after the first set of organisms were cleaned up by the antibacterial. If the second infection is a completely different genus and species, it's pretty easy to say it's a reinfection. If the first one were E. coli and the second one were Staph or a Proteus, that's, they're obviously different. The real problem comes if the, let's say it's an E. coli now and three months again it's an E. coli, is it really the same organism or is it a new organism? And we used to try to make that distinction based on the susceptibility pattern. If the susceptibility patterns were the same, we used to say that they're probably the same organism. Unfortunately, Dr. Freitag's paper listed at the bottom of the slide uh, debunked that and says that you cannot predict whether it is the same organism or a new one based on the susceptibility pattern. A relapsing infection means that there's a positive culture from the same organism that never truly went away. You might have sterilized a little bit of the urine, but you didn't actually sterilize the tissues. In one study out of North Carolina, about 40% of dogs that they evaluated for recurrent infection had relapsing infection, meaning that they had the same organism. This is usually identified by the fact that you have a positive culture, you give the antibiotic, and within a week of stopping the antibiotic, you have the same 
type of organism that's growing uh, in reasonable numbers, perhaps lower numbers than were uh, isolated initially. So when we have relapsing infections, the fact that the urine is sterile does not guarantee that the tissues are indeed sterile. Uh, if you have a positive culture when they're on antibiotics, uh, it's almost impossible to eradicate the organisms. That would be a, the definition of a persistent infection. So how are we going to choose the antibiotics? How lucky are you feeling? Do you really want to gamble and take a chance and guess which antibiotic might be useful in some of these situations? It's really not appropriate to uh, guess and throw your darts at the moving roulette wheel and choose the antibiotic. We need to do this more scientifically. As we talked about in the first session, uh, treatment is usually based on and should be based on either minimum inhibitory concentrations or the Kirby-Bauer disc diffusion method as shown on the, the far right of the lower panel. Patients that have recurrent infections that have two or more organisms should definitely have susceptibility testing. If they have failed an initial uh, treatment, you need to have susceptibility testing. If the patient has had recent antibiotics for other reasons, then you desperately need to have susceptibility testing because the organisms are more likely to be resistant. Fortunately, most urinary tract infections exist with just one organism, but sometimes you have two or even three. That makes it a bit more complicated. What I usually do in that situation is choose the 